Eddie Stobart's iconic red and green machines have been delivering the goods that helped keep the UK running for 40 years. Their 2,000 trucks pound the tarmac, making deliveries every five seconds. And as the truck wheels stop moving, everyone suffers. No matter what the conditions, over a million tonnes of goods a week still need to arrive on schedule. No time for slackers in here, it's got to get done quick. And when they don't, there's trouble. We have to be there on time, every time, for every delivery. This year, the company's got bigger ambitions. Expanding their two airports, opening a railway station, and even investing in an airline. But their bread and butter is trucking. And for the drivers on the front line, the pressure's always on. We've got a problem. Oh, they shut the bloody road because the white dough again. This is what we don't want, mate. You know, this is what we don't want. Coming up, trucker Ashley has a beef with a bovine blocking his way. There's the bull there. That's the thing that's holding us up. Look. The bosses mark Stobart's 40th anniversary with the party of all parties. When, when I'm on tour, I count Stobart trucks. I swear to God, I do. And Matt gets a brand new truck. We're living a dream, we're living a dream. But runs into trouble when he hits town. London, you can stick it right up your, you know what. Since Stobart began, its workforce has rocketed from eight drivers on their books to over 3,000. But some are tougher than the rest, spending up to six days a week driving, sleeping and eating in their cabs. This is home. Welcome to where I live. It's compact, in a word. These hardcore drivers are known as trampers, and they clock up over 100,000 miles a year. I actually love being out on the road and I enjoy the freedom. I don't think I'd ever be cooped up inside. 43-year-old Ashley Maddox has dedicated a decade of his life to serving Stobart. Basically, I think if you cut me, I'd uh, probably bleed green. That's the old livery, that is. My first truck was done in this livery when I first started. I think it was called Laura Ann as well. Traditionally, Stobart trucks have been named after girls. And for the last two years, Ashley's been driving Acacia Jane. And in that time, they've managed to cover the distance around the Earth eight times. Ashley's based in Newport, Wales. It's just one of 42 Stobart depots throughout the UK, Ireland and Europe. Today, he's a long way from home. 290 miles northeast in Cumbria, where the business began. That's it, we're uh, finally at Carlisle. This uh, weather's a bit ropey, mind. Uh, this fog's moved in quite quickly. Ashley's about to head even further north. As his trailer's loaded, he picks up his orders from the planning office. Wick. 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 Is it? The Scottish town of Wick is Stobart's northernmost delivery point, just a few miles from John O'Groats. The weather OK going up there? Do you know the roads? It's been tough. Yeah. But I think everything's running OK at the yeah. moment. For Ashley, who's never been further north than Aberdeen, it's new territory. I mean, I've run from uh, there, Cumbran, and I'm now here. And apparently, Wick goes off the top of the map. It's not even up there, so it must be around here somewhere. <laughs> Right, let's get on our way. On the dot, Ashley doesn't hang about. That's it, first couple of turns of the wheel now. We're, uh, we're on our way in Scotland. Here we come. From the Carlisle depot, Ashley has a 360-mile journey ahead of him. He'll head past Glasgow and then through the mountainous Cairngorm National Park. Finally, he'll take a windy B road to the coastal town of Wick. It's a seven-hour journey, and bad weather around Carlisle has already put him behind schedule. But as he crosses the Scottish border, the Gaelic gods begin to shine on him. Well, as we see at home, it's, uh, it's tidy, lovely. 
I just might have a job understanding me when I get up the top there, you know, we get to, to work and uh, they're probably going, hey, what you saying? Ashley's truck is packed full of 13 tonnes of DIY supplies and 2,000 household plants, which require some careful handling. We've been given the important task today of taking a double-decker um, trailer, which is a very specialised trailer. Stobart has 50 of these versatile trailers in their fleet. To double the floor space, there's a handy internal swivel deck. Running through the top is a special heating system to protect delicate loads from cold weather, like Ashley's house plants. He's now two and a half hours into his journey. Uh, we, we're running a bit behind time, so we can do without any hold-ups. You know, that's the last thing we need. I think I spoke too soon. I know what's going on here. I can see a police car on the roundabout, so um, until we get a bit nearer, I can't quite tell what's going on. Ashley is at the Keir roundabout, 30 miles from Perth in central Scotland, a part of the country not normally known for its traffic jams. Whatever it is, so they need to hurry up. <laughs> As the tailback builds, it becomes clear Ashley's going nowhere. He decides to investigate. Do you know what's going on? There's a bull running loose in the roundabout. You're joking. A young bull has escaped from a local abattoir. It's running loose on the roundabout, and the police are taking no chances. They've closed all approaching roads as they try to get the half-ton beast under control. Well, this is not every day I come and 45 minutes later, they're still waiting. The clock is ticking. This is the most unique reason I've ever come across for being late for a delivery. Every driver is given a delivery time slot. If they miss it, the load could be rejected, which means Stobart loses money. I know for a fact that uh, we're going to be in trouble with this, this delivery, trying to get there on time. Uh, for the Scottish Police Force, out and about chasing one bull. Doesn't help my delivery mind, does it? There's a lot at stake for Ashley. There's still 240 miles of tough terrain to go, and he's almost two hours behind schedule. Coming up, will the bull's dash for freedom put Ashley's plants in peril? It's turning out to be one of the hardest days I've ever had. Yeah. And Matt has his own close encounter with a parked car. Sake. I don't believe it. Haulage company Eddie Stobart is turning 40. To mark the milestone, they're sponsoring a charity ball that raises money for cancer research. Boss William Stobart has given right-hand man Neil Burden the task of overseeing the event. Neil is the man for the job. This, if, if it's going to happen at all, Neil will, will get it to happen here. London's iconic Battersea Power Station is the venue for the glamorous charity bash. The derelict building poses some unique challenges. When I come in, I thought, pretty hell, why this is going to be really difficult. It's a building site, essentially. The party will be filled with celebrity guests and business bigwigs. And William's got ambitious plans to wow the crowd by making his Stobart lorries the stars of the party. On the night, you'll see a lot of trucks around, and we're also putting a truck inside, which is a special truck. And that special truck is one of the most powerful lorries on Britain's roads, the first Volvo FH16 to join the Stobart fleet. It's top of the range, like, you know, it doesn't really get much bigger, and this is it. 34-year-old Matt Eakins is the lucky driver who'll be putting this bad boy through its paces. This is down my new toy. I don't think I've been this excited since I got my first scale electric, like, you know what I mean? Happy-go-lucky Matt has been a Stobart driver for 11 years. Some of us are better than others. We sound the best, but I'm pretty much up there, like, you know? 
today is a big day for Matt. He's at the Chelford Depot near Manchester to collect his brand new beast. There's a few little extras on there. We've got leather seats, uh, leather steering wheel inside. On the... We've got black lights in the front. There's various chrome around on the outsides. The FH-16 has a 700 horsepower engine, which means it can pull the equivalent of seven double-decker buses up a hill at 56 miles an hour. And it's got gadgets galore, with a lane control detector to alert drivers if they drift across white lines. It sounds an alarm if there's a car or bike in the driver's blind spot. And its active cruise control can brake faster than any driver. The company is so proud it's given it a personalised Stobart number plate. The truck and trailer cost a cool 170 grand. And Matt's first job is to deliver it safely to Battersea Power Station for tomorrow night's charity ball. I'm going to the centre of London. Try not to panic, but, um, yeah, to me, boss, yeah, I'm definitely panicking, yeah. Matt boards the beast. Ready for the weekend to take on a very unusual mission. This is a first for myself. I'm used to time deliveries as such, you know. This now is totally different because we're actually attending an event which I've never done before. You know, in simple terms, this truck's got to be there. Me being number one driver, we'll be there on time, if not early. From Chelford, Matt is travelling 100 miles southeast to Stobart's Midlands Depot at Crick. There, he's meeting up with five other trucks. Together, they'll form an eddy convoy and continue 85 miles south to London. Can you make sure that the inside's immaculate? Clean it Special out? projects manager Neil Burden has hand-picked the rest of the convoy drivers from the elite Stobart training team. Matt's not quite here, but he's going to be here in the next five, ten minutes. Right. So they all know the work, they all know what they're talking about. I couldn't ask for a better crew, really. These top-notch driver trainers aren't known for getting their hands dirty. But for this unique occasion, the trucks have to be spotless and scrubbed from top to tire. How many trainers does it take to clean a truck? One, two, three, four, five of us. 35-year-old Lee Dowling's been one of Stobart's driver trainers for two years. We're going to feel a lot of pride going down to London especially really in six trucks in convoy. It's going to look really, really good. It's really looking forward to it, really looking forward to it. And Lee's also got the responsibility of carrying a very important piece of cargo down to the charity ball. So what's going on the back of my trailer is a Mercedes. This brand new £30,000 car is going to be a raffle prize. And each ticket will cost 250 quid. So, a little bit more added pressure. It's not the kind of thing you uh, carry on the country, is it? No, it's it's all your responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> nice price for somebody, though, isn't it? Isn't it just? Flipping heck. Eddie Stobart attracts a 15,000 strong fan club, and words got out amongst its members that there's a very special truck on the road. Just come into our depot here at Crick. There's quite a few people all like, lined up already to see the truck. A brand new truck is always a thrill for the Eddie spotters. As this one is the only FH-16 on the Stobart fleet, it's the one they all want to get a good look at. Well, it's a rarity, so chances of spotting it is remote, so you get an opportunity, you've got to take it. And Matt's lapping up the attention. Yeah, I've got quite a big grin on my face at the moment. Look at them all, look. <laughs> it's like the Queen's coming to visit, you know what I mean? How did you hear about it? How do you get the inside scoop? <laughs> like that on camera. <laughs> Matt's nameless truck will be taking centre stage at the fundraising ball, where guests will take part in an auction to christen it. So it needs to be primped and preened to perfection. And Matt's got another big responsibility for the drive down to London. Just being told on the lead truck. I can't get lost now, like, you know what I mean? Living a dream, we're living a dream. With Matt leading the charge down south, it's Lee's job to safely bring up the rear. Here we go, off down to London. 
Let's see what happens on the way down. I'm sure everything will be OK. Mercedes on the back. <laughs> that was a funny look at me then. But as soon as they leave the depot, there's a problem. There we go. Straight onto the M1. And it's a car park. Before they've even started, the convoys come to a standstill. We've got quite a bit of metal in front of us. This is what we don't want, mate. You know, this is what we don't want. The convoy's due in London in two hours. They've got 85 miles to go, but the traffic isn't moving. But what can you do? Will the party plans be pooped? We'll find out later. Tramper Ashley Maddox is having traffic problems of his own. He's got another 240 miles to his drop-off point near John O'Groats, but he's stuck in a traffic jam on a roundabout in central Scotland, and he's already two hours behind schedule. Which is typical, you know, time-sensitive delivery, and uh, we've got a bull running around the roundabout blocking all the road. A bull has made a dash for freedom from a local abattoir and is causing mayhem at the roundabout. It's a potentially dangerous situation for the public, so police have locked down the surrounding roads. Ooh, that's my Ashley's planner, Dave, wants to know what the hold-up is. Hello? Hi, Ash. We, we, we're stuck in traffic. There's a bull running round the roundabout. And you are joking. See, I, I, I can't believe it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. OK, yeah. well, that is definitely a first. I've never heard that in my life before. Yeah. I have as oh. well. There's the bull there. That's the bloody thing that's holding us up. Look. <laughs> Jeepers O'Reilly, look at the sun. Oh, the ballsy bull has escaped the clutches of the police and heads straight for the cars and Ashley's truck. It's furthest north I'm going and it's turning out to be one of the hardest days I've ever had as well. It really is. But not as bad a day as the bull's about to have. Police marksmen are called in. and the bull is destroyed. What's that? A gunshot. As the police clear up the aftermath, Ashley continues his journey, now severely delayed. Yeah, this knocked us back it up, and uh, we've lost a good couple of hours now. His delivery point in Wick is still 240 miles away. And planner Dave has some more bad news. I've just spoken to the customer. Yes. They told us that they, it's, it's going to be too late for them today to accept that loan. Oh, you're joking. No, they weren't very sympathetic about our, uh, yeah. our little incident. Um, Ashley has no chance of making his delivery time slot. He's now going to have to re-attempt it tomorrow. Absolutely gutted. You know, it's failed. He decides to drive as far as Inverness and waited out until morning. We get to uh, Inverness now, find a tattoo shop and have failure tattooed on my forehead. Loser. <laughs> the life of a tramper holds no glamour. Tonight, Ashley is parked up in a service station and will be dining and sleeping in his cab. Honestly, what a day. I get these boots off that I've had on for 15 hours. I can feel my feet coming to life now. Tonight's uh, speciality is going to be cheese and pickle sandwiches, a pork pie, probably a bag of crisps and uh, a yoghurt for afters. Trampers like Ashley spend around 20 hours a day in their truck. So you normally I'd watch a DVD by the day I've had today. I just, my eyes are like lead. Five hundred and fifty miles south, six brand new trucks are in convoy and are heading into London for Stobart's anniversary charity ball. They wanted to be there before nightfall, but they've been queued up on the M1 after a major accident. Oh dear, another truck's involved. That's never good. Not my cup of tea. 
Now they'll be entering one of the busiest cities in the world at rush hour. Welcome to Narnia. But it doesn't bother convoy leader Matt. I think anybody hate London. It's entertaining. You know, it, back where I live, everyone's tucked up, you know, ready to watch the round of Coronation Street or EastEnders, but now not here. Everyone's still doing shopping and finishing working. Fellow driver Lee isn't having so much fun. Come on, people. I've got a car to deliver. But as the Stobart convoy approaches its destination, Lee's mood begins to lighten. London, baby. <laughs> all the trucks, they're all there in front of us. All we've got to do is turn right. You turn right again, bosh. Whoa, that's a nice tight corner. Brixton, Clapham Junction, I don't want to be going around there, surely. But convoy leader Matt Satnav has lost its signal. Go right, do I, do I go right? Bring my little bit, oh, me, I don't know. This ain't right, I know this isn't right. Matt and another one of the drivers have missed their turning. I've got a horrible feeling. I have gone the wrong way. It says right here, so... Lee and the rest of the convoy make a wise choice and decide not to follow. <laughs> Gate two. <sighs> Battersea Power Station. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> Safely at his destination, Lee parks up and checks on his valuable road. I tell you what, Still. that is one pristine uh, delivered first class. It's one less thing for Neil Burden to worry about. Come on, boys. Now he's just got to think about Matt and the missing trucks. They should have turned right at the set of traffic lights and they went straight on. So I'd imagine they're trying to get themselves turned round somewhere and get in. The set now. <laughs> I don't know who's behind me, but I bet he's cursing me right now. <laughs> Matt has been searching for the power station for the last quarter of an hour. London, you can stick it right up your... you know what. After resorting to his A to Z, he's now within sight of the power station, but has been forced to use some of London's smallest back streets. I think I saw some trailer lights down there. And just when he thinks he's on the home straight... He's come to a grinding halt. Yeah. Matt has crashed his brand new truck. For sake! Into a parked car. This is going to go down well against me, isn't it? Eh? This is going to go down well against me. Quite solid, that. Fellow trucker Pete tries to lend support, but Matt's just entered his worst nightmare. Bet you wish you stopped in bed now, don't you? <laughs> Coming up, Matt gives his boss the bad news. Then. And it's the end of the road for Ashley. It's getting to the point that I can't go any further without dropping into the sea. Six Eddie Stobart trucks have travelled in convoy to London. <laughs> Gate two. <sighs> That's the power station. Lee Dowling and three of the drivers have arrived at the capital's iconic landmark, where tomorrow night their trucks will be the focus of Stobart's 40th anniversary charity ball. But there's a problem. Unfortunately, two of our guys have got lost. <laughs> Special Projects Manager Neil is blissfully unaware of the reason his drivers have gone AWOL. For sake! After a 200-mile journey from Manchester, driver Matt Eakins has crashed the top truck of the Stobart fleet into a parked car. I don't believe it. Just yards from the power station. This is going to go down well against me, isn't it? Eh? This is going to go down well against me. The truck's reinforced steel bumper is embedded in the wing of the car and won't what? budge. Back, you'll push it. It's no. time to break the bad news to the boss. 
the cars built. Here we go. Hey, Pig. You're right. 200 yards off the covers off the street. Right on. So is it, is, it the, is it the back bumper, yeah? What we have to do, though, we need to get him off this car. He's stuck on it. All right, mate, no problems. See you in a minute. Down on. Well, then. <sighs> the bumper of the trailer's hooked up on the car. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to go for a cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get us 100 yards from the gate. With only 24 hours to go before the party and Stobart's pride at stake, Neil dispatches a rescue team to dislodge the car. Very steady, Chris. Hang on, hang on. Hang on, Chris. Hang on. Chris. Chris. Right, just tell him to try coming back very steady in that right hand line. They try reversing the truck. Well, that's been all night. But that's not the solution. They try the bouncing technique. And that doesn't work either. More spanners in your truck. Go and get more spanners out of your truck. Tell him to turn that unit off, Chris. Finally, they dismantle the truck's bumper. It's all too much for Matt. And for the first time, he's lost four words. He's been really, really gutted. Yeah, we keep running it through, running it through his mind all night now, but the thing is, it's done. We'll get it fixed. Half an hour later, with the police informed and minus a back bumper, a red-faced Matt finally drives his wagon into the power station. <laughs> but Neil keeps things in perspective. There you go, hopefully there's nobody hurt, that's the main thing. Apart from my pride at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the lads to clock off. It'll be an early start tomorrow. They've got to get the truck fixed in time for William Stobart's inspection. Six hundred miles north in Scotland, Stobart tramper Ashley Maddox has hit the road early and is re-attempting to deliver his load. We've still got a fair old way to get up to to Wick, so fingers crossed that things go well today now and uh, no more bulls. Yesterday, he failed his delivery when a runaway bull caused traffic chaos. Through this north, I'm going, and it's turning out to be one of the hardest days I've ever had as well. It really is. Ashley was forced to spend the night in Inverness. He's now heading 100 miles even further north, along the Scottish coast, to his delivery point in Wick. Overnight, the temperatures plummeted to minus three degrees, and Ashley's load of delicate houseplants is at risk of frost damage. I'm worried about the, some of the plants on the back, with the cold. And like me, they need to be kept warm, so... I'm going to check the system now, make sure it's still running. Stobart has fitted Ashley's trailer with a heating system, which keeps the plants at a steady 16 degrees, but it operates on a timer, and that means regular stops. What it is, it only runs for 90 minutes at a time, so you have to keep stopping and resetting it. We just reset the switches. Um, it keeps it at a steady temperature, because what we don't want to do is for the plants to wilt with the cold. I can hear it kicking in now. It's all up and running now. With his mind at rest, Ashley gets back on track. And he's now able to see the lighter side of yesterday's incident with the bull. It'll probably be my new saying now. It's the bull's fault. Blame everything on the bull now. Which my wife says to me, why have you come home at two o'clock in the morning in that, that state? I'll just say, it's the bull's fault. You know. Ashley's a day late, but finally reaches his drop-off point and delivers his DIY supplies and 2,000 houseplants. That's it now, that delivery's done. For Welshman Ashley, Wick is the furthest north he's ever been. And his bosses have given him special permission to go a few miles further to visit mainland Britain's most northerly point. We've just come into uh, John O'Groats now, and uh, it's getting to the point that I can't go any further 
without dropping into the sea. And I gotta be honest, it was well worth the drive. A Welshman as far north as he can possibly go. <laughs> Ashley's traveled 360 miles, driven through thick fog in wild terrain, encountered a bull, and what does he find at John O'Groats? More Eddie fans. Yeah, I just didn't expect to see an Eddie store part up at John O'Groats. I like Eddie store Made it. Here we are, John O'Groats. This is one of the rewards uh, about being a, a truck driver is um, you, you get to see things that you never would have done if you were sat in an office. Patriotic Ashley's come prepared for this momentous occasion. And just to let you know that the Welsh have arrived at John O'Groats. For the last six years, Stobart has been run by old friends Andrew Tinkler and William Stobart. But the company began with one man, William's father, Eddie, who ran an agricultural business in Cumbria. When my father started the company, he, he sort of looked after farmers. He did, lot, he did like freshing and hay and straw and various things. Eddie's delivery truck was so in demand, William's elder brother, Edward, spotted the potential to expand the fleet and established the haulage side of the business. When Dad Eddie retired in the 80s, around the same time as youngest son William joined the firm as a driver, there were 12 trucks in the fleet. By 2001, Edward had put 900 on the road. Today, they've got over 2,000. You know, if somebody had said then to me that what the company would be like today, I would not have believed that. In 2004, William and business partner Andrew Tinklet bought Edward out of the company. Since then, the annual turnover has grown to almost half a billion pounds. But some things haven't changed, like the truck's distinctive red and green paint job. It's back from my father's days. The first trucks he put on the road, they were green and red at that point. The white came in in the 80s and then, and then through into the beginning of the 2000s. Andrew Tinkler and myself, we sort of came up with this design of a cab wrap. For William, the trucks are the public face of the company. Which is why at the 40th anniversary charity ball, the trucks will be on show. And the party is taking place around Stobart's flagship lorry, Matt's FH16. Builders have been up all night, constructing the truck's very own marquee inside the building. What I've got to do now is, is reverse it into the power station itself. After last night's crash, the bumper's been replaced. This time, it's not parked cars he needs to worry about. It's squeezing his 44-foot-long truck between two of the power station's supporting columns. The crunch I was here, hopefully not be any crunching. What's that say? Yeah, go on. It's the centrepiece, you know, the centre attraction for this weekend, so, you know, I don't want any damage, you know, at all done to the truck and trailer. At the end of it, I still want the job. Great. Straight, straight back like that, yeah? Reversing's hard enough as it is, especially what we call blind sign reversing, which I've, which, which I've got to do now. Despite the truck's fancy blind spot alarm, Neil isn't taking any chances as Matt turns the truck a full 90 degrees. Bring it wrong. Back, wait, 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 back, back. Straighten up. With the column cleared, Matt can breathe a sigh of relief. And it's job done. <laughs> With the truck in position, the rest of the marquee can now be completed. That wasn't too bad, though, was it, really? It wasn't too bad at all. Right, 
You need to come across, mate. Outside the power station, Lee Dowling has spent the last half an hour doing some manoeuvring of his own. Come across this way. That's it. Back. You go back about that much. William wants the five remaining trucks to light up the red carpet for guests as they arrive. Yeah! And Lee's finished just in time because the bosses are here. First impression is so important to people walking through that door and they'll see it right away. If there's something that isn't out of line, they see it and they remember it. Yeah. And I think... what, right, just look at, I'm looking at trucks and wheels, yeah. William's attention to detail is legendary at Stobart, and he's already spotted a problem with Lee's truck formation. Everybody's coming in, aren't they? Yeah. Right? So you want them to see the lights? And the yes, things. if they're coming in and they're facing after, right. but on a few angles, like the are. William wants them all turned the opposite way, so they face guests as they arrive. So the needs to be pointing to where the car's coming. So that... Yeah. So you want full impact, don't you? You've got to get your name out there. Look cool, that way. <laughs> So it's back behind the wheel for Lee and the drivers. From the original plan that we had, that was being thrown out the window, and uh, we're with the new plan. <laughs> right, you need to come across, mate. So come forward. William and Andrew head into the power station to inspect the party's centrepiece, Matt's truck. But the first thing William sees is that the wagon isn't level with the trailer. That kind of wagon cannot sit like that, you know, that's just not right, you know. So we have to, like, jack it up, or, or we're either going to jack it or drop the air. But to drop the air, they have to cut the, the bar that's holding the tent up, so... It's maybe not the right thing to do. The joist that's standing in their way is made of reinforced aluminium. But ex-construction worker Andrew Tinkler isn't going to let that stop him. Because we couldn't get the suspension down on the truck because this went underneath. So we're having to cut it just to please Sir William. <laughs> <laughs> While the rest of the crew sort the problem, Matt gets the chance to meet his boss for the first time. What horsepower has that got? 700. 700. That, that'll suck you up. <laughs> Gently. I still get the bonus, though. Oh, yeah, gently. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. I've just met William up for the first time, so um, it was quite emotional, actually. But there's one thing Matt failed to mention. It just give me a brand spanking new trailer, certain trucks. I'm not going to say I've had, a, I've had an incident already and within 24 hours. I haven't told you it, William, but truly am sorry. <laughs> In the meantime, Andrew has managed to drop the trailer level with the truck and William's world is back in balance. But the venue's far from ready. 650 VIP guests have shelled out 500 quid each, and they're on their way expecting five-star glamour. Tight, isn't it? You've got another, what, three hours to go. It's going to be tight. We'll have a go. It'll do. Coming up, it's tyres and tiaras as Matt rubs shoulders with the celebs. Life is uh, top of the pops at the moment, it really is. And there's a bidding war to name his brand new truck. Three so far, together three and a half thousand. Three and a half, thank you very much. To celebrate their 40th anniversary, haulage company Eddie Stobart is sponsoring a charity ball. Project manager Neil Burden and his team have spent the last 24 hours tinkering, shunting and scrubbing to get the Stobart trucks on display. We've had a real struggle all day today. Another 20 minutes or so, I think the pressure will start to come off soon. 650 VIP guests have been invited to the ball, where they hope to raise money for cancer research and Ronan Keating's charity. I'm a bit of a boy, I've always liked trucks and cars, and the Skullbart rigs always look amazing, very cool. And he's got a confession. When I'm on tour, I count Skullbart trucks. I swear to God, I do. And one very special truck, Matt's brand new FH16, is taking centre stage. How long is this? How long is the truck? How long? Yeah. 
Um, the amount of interest we've got at the moment for the trucking trailer is absolutely nuts. Everybody wants to look in and want some information about you know, the truck, the trailer. At least it's in one piece still. <laughs> Maybe you should have seen it. Really? Oh, my world fell apart for a minute yesterday. And it gets even better for Matt when he meets one of his heroes. But his truck and trailer are here to raise money for charity, so now it's time to earn their keep. Please welcome my old friend Ronan Kingsman. Lady Stalbar and Volvo Trucks have created a very special opportunity. It involves one truck, thousands of miles of road, and one shared vision. But to welcome you all... For the tidy sum of £1,000, guests can have their name emblazoned on the side of the trailer, which will travel the length and breadth of the country over the next year. The space on the side of the truck for probably 156 people. All right, this guy, he's paid for two here. Right. Stobart has brought its own truck wrapping team down to London. They've set up a makeshift production line in the back of Matt's trailer to get all 156 names up by the end of the night. I've had a request. This one's um, Roman's nephew, I think. He wants the name directly with Roman's The orders are rolling in, but there's one exclusive space on the truck up for grabs. There's a three-year waiting list to have a name put on the front of an Eddie Stobart truck. You can do it here, now, tonight. Here's your chance. On auction is the chance for somebody to name Matt's truck. We'll start the bidding off then. Thousand quid. So even for thousand quid. And it's an anxious time for Matt. Whatever his truck is called, he's got to live with it for the next year. What would I call it? Yeah. My new little toy. My new, my new, my new big toy. Three so far. Let's give a three and a half thousand. Three and a half. Thank you very much. Four grand. Let's give a four thousand pounds. My wife's nickname is Nicky Nacky Noo. So I have Nicky Nacky Noo. Across the front. And that's why Lee won't be naming the truck. Four and a half down here, five thousand pounds on the table behind. Five going once, five thousand pounds going twice. He's sold for five thousand pounds, amazingly. Thank you very much indeed. Out the back there, superb. Right, get your name up there. What name will it be? Property developer Nicholas King has splashed out five grand. He's going to name the truck after his partner. The wait is finally over for Matt. Debbie, the name's nice. Yeah, it's lovely. It's, yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you. Oh. Me and Debbie all the way. <laughs> Come on. Cut. Time out. Time out. Cut. It's the end of the night, and a good time's obviously been had by all. Tonight was so successful, and we raised £779,000 tonight. Ridiculous amount of money. And there's just time for Matt to give Debbie a good rub. What you got to think of, mate, that name there is worth five grand. <laughs> I've got a five grand name, a 120 grand truck, and a wheel that's stuck in... God, God knows how much the trailer's worth. It ain't moving. You know what I'm saying? Mum, I'm not home for a year. Next time on Eddie Stobart Trucks and Trailers, a hundred brand new trucks hit the road. I hope it's as reliable as the last one of them. And pressure's always on, you know. Matt's feeling the heat in his new chilled trailer. Getting there and all the pizzas are like hanging over the edge of the pallet because I've cooked them or something, do you know what I mean? Don't think it would go down too well. And Barry's in spotter heaven. Lovely, beautiful. Out of the 5,000 trucks I've seen over the years, it's got to be in the top three, no two ways about it. Brand new mentalist next as the new season continues and Rigsby's dad turns out to be quite the charmer in just a tick.